Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can activate a moving platform using a trigger. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel, and indeed, every other video. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, the idea of creating something like a moving platform is actually very simple. Uh, however, we can use a trigger to actually activate it when we step on it. So I have a scene here from the asset store and it's just a basically a sci-fi scene and it's pretty nice. Um, basically I have this set up here. This will be the platform which will go down and out into space. So firstly what we need to do is actually create a, an animation for it so as it knows it has to animate downwards. So let's set that first. So if you don't have the animation tab, just like I don't right now, you'll need to click on this little button down here, click on add tab and click animation and it'll bring up right there. So make sure you have your platform selected, click on create and let's have platform. And then we just need to click the record button and set that first keyframe. Now, because we're only going to be moving on the Y position at this present moment in time, if you're using X or Z, obviously you would need to set those in the keyframes as well. This one up here, the position in the transform, the Y, you'll see if we change that position, that makes all the difference. But now if we set it to zero, just like I have now, that is the first keyframe. So whatever position your actual platform is at, make sure it is red up here to set that first keyframe. So I want this to go down over the course of, let's say, five seconds. So five seconds at 60 frames a second mean that is frame 300. So at frame 300, I want my platform to be down here and on level with wherever we come off at, which is right there. So now we've got that animation in place. So let's press that record button again. Let's go to project. And on the actual animation itself, we need to untick loop time. Now, if you press play now, it will actually play that platform animation, as we can see. So to get around that, what we need to do is we need to go into the controller for that platform, which is right here. You, alternatively, you can select your platform in the hierarchy, go to the animator component and double click the controller. It's the same thing. Now what we need to do is create an idle state or an empty state. So over here, we need to right click, create state, empty. And then on that new state, right click, and then you can set layer as default. That means when we press play now, the platform won't trigger. It'll just stay still. But you can see it is right down the bottom now because that is currently where it is. It's just where it's ended up because of our animation. So we just need to set that back to where it should be. So if we press play again, you can see our platform is right there. So the secret to this is getting the trigger to recognize that we are the player and that we are coming into this section. So the best way to do that is go to your controller, whether it be first person or third person. And over here at the top of the inspector panel, click where it says tag and change that to player. You can create a custom tag if you want to. However, because there's not much going on in this scene, I'm just simply going to use player. But it's up to you whatever tag you use. Just remember the name of your tag. So to get this all working, we need to right click down here in the assets, create a C-sharp script and call it platform trigger. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So the way this is going to work is we're going to place this onto a game object which will act and serve as a trigger, i.e. when we walk into it, we'll be able to trigger that specific motion that we've just created in the animation. So in order to do that, let's get rid of void start and void update. We don't need those two methods. We do, however, need to have the actual platform itself as a variable. So public game object platform move semicolon and all we need to do here is have void on trigger enter and by default it will call it private which is fine and in here in the parentheses it will have collider other we need to make sure that this stays in place you can rename this from other to whatever you want but i'm just going to go with the default for now what we have to do is type if and in brackets other dot 
tag equals, and that is double equals, and then in quotes, player, and then open curly bracket. And what we need to do is have platform move dot get component and in spiky brackets animator, not animation, make sure it is animator, open close bracket dot play, play, <laughs> And in brackets and quotes, the name of the animation we created. And if you remember, we just called it platform. And then close bracket, semicolon. After that, let's put this dot game object dot uh, get component. And in spiky brackets, box collider, open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so to quickly go through what this script is doing we are saying as soon as something enters the trigger zone we then check if the tag is player if the tag is player then we move the platform down and we also turn off the box collider basically the trigger so we can't re-trigger it over and over and over if it isn't the player then it does nothing so let's head back into Unity, and now what we need to do is place a trigger over here where the platform is. So we can do that very quickly and easily by going game object, 3D object, cube. Just maneuver the cube into position, which is going to be over the actual uh, area itself, but it doesn't necessarily have to cover it all. It could just be a section covering across. So if we set this as two, maybe a bit small, let's try four. So you can see, as soon as we enter this trigger, it will activate everything we need. We just need to turn off Mesh Renderer so it becomes an invisible object. And then let's turn on the isTrigger function right there. Finally, we need to drag and drop our platform trigger script right there. And then we just need to set the platform move as the actual platform, which is up here right there. Just make sure you set the correct object for your platform in there. So to test this out now, what I'm going to do is take our first person controller and reset the tag to untagged and press play. We should be able to walk into this area without anything actually triggering at all. So now let's actually set our trigger, our tag, sorry, for the trigger to say player. So we're now tagged as player. So if we walk in, there we go. The platform is now moving down. Perfect. And obviously it's not going to do anything else because the trigger has been disabled. So you could create an inverse trigger if you wanted to move it back up. So just to run through this all correctly now, let's set the tag back to player. Let's save our scene and let's press play and try this out. So the reason we set that whole tag thing is because, like I say, we only want the player to activate it. We don't want anything else in the scene to do so. So in we go. And down we move on our platform. So that is how we can create a moving platform using a trigger that only the player can trigger. Hope that's helped guys and thank you very much for watching.